G'day, I'm Dr. Kev. And I'm Harley. And welcome to Car Design Workshop. We're going to be taking this and turning it into this. In this video, we're pulling apart a Subaru EJ20. Not with the goal to rebuild it, but instead to repurpose it. This engine's going to become a mock-up for Project 171, the custom sports car project we've been detailing in this YouTube channel. Well, if you've watched any of the videos on this channel, you're probably asking, who is Harley? And I met Harley quite a while ago while he was a part of the ECU racing team. He now works as an engineer in research and development on improving energy efficiency and heavy transport systems in the mining industry. He's a very talented engineer and has worked on everything from composite structures to engine management systems and has even been involved with flying vehicles. I was pretty lucky to get Harley to help me out tearing down this engine. He's much more of a fan of German cars and has restored and modified some pretty good examples. At the moment, he's got a really nice E34, a 535 that he's turbocharged and put a lot of work into. And it actually runs most of the time. And because he is a somewhat self-respecting BMW lover, He's restored the mandatory E30, which he sold for the sort of silly money that E30s get these days. Recently, we worked on a Porsche 924 together that we bought as a non-runner and then sold it once we had it running again. The 924 is a car that if it was as fast as it looked, we'd probably still be working on it. And what we're pulling apart here is far from the best E20 out there. This is just a cheap engine off Facebook marketplace. When I went to pick it up, it was sitting on a tire in the dirt on somebody's block. Now the guy selling it said that when it came out of the car, it was running fine, but the significant corrosion in the cooling system and these big end bearings tell a completely different story. But I didn't want to buy it to rebuild it. This engine was always intended to be stripped as a mock-up engine. So the goal for this engine was to build a lightweight, dimensionally accurate mock-up of an EJ20. We'd been using this mock-up for helping with the chassis design, making sure we've got a really good engine bay layout. And the best mock-up is an actual engine. But engines like this are heavy, messy, and difficult to move around during prototyping. So what I want to do is tear this down and only use the external components to make a much more cleaned up and neat and tidy looking mock-up. Now as we're doing this stripping of the motor, we can weigh all of the components. And this helps us to get dimensions of everything and weights of all of the individual components. And this can help us with future modelling which is pretty important. The engine is a large proportion of the weight of a lightweight sports car. Having accurate center of gravity calculations for the engine means that we're going to be able to have accurate center of gravity calculations for the car, which is a really important vehicle dynamics consideration. Part of the motivation of doing this whole project was that I wasn't able to find an accurate weight of the engine online on a forum. If you go onto forums, you find, you know, a mix of accuracy when it comes to actual details on, on engines and components and cars. And one thing I struggled to do was get a weight that was matched up for an engine in a particular configuration. So was it an engine that was just a short block? Was it an engine with a long block, but no uh, intake systems? Or did it have the whole lot? So weight estimates on the forums varied quite a lot. And I have no real trust that the weights that you were reading were actually gonna be the likely weight of the engine. Now, one thing you'll notice as we've pulled this apart is, yeah, we don't like to read instructions. So if you're coming to this video looking for the directions to how I pull apart an EJ20, then it's probably not the video for that. Now we did get the engine apart, and we're fairly sure we didn't damage anything important, but we weren't overly worried because this is not an engine that was ever gonna be rebuilt. Well, 
Also, once we have this bare block, we can use 3D printed parts and really lightweight parts to mock up any custom parts that we might be developing for this engine. And this lets us test our mounts for the engine, our plumbing, our bodywork, without risking any damage of the engine and probably limiting the damage on our backs as we're lifting it around. And doing this in, in life size helps us with the ergonomics of the vehicle. So how do we access different service points and wiring of the, of the vehicle? Things like the gear linkages are really difficult to do just in CAD. And having a physical reference speeds up the build and reduces the number of errors we're going to have. It's really easy to get CAD vision when you're working in design. In the computer model, it's often hard to judge the clearances that you might have, and you're constantly zooming in and out, and what might seem like a really generous clearance might actually be very close in real life. Being caught out by this plenty of times in the past. It's also incredibly easy to design things where you just can't reach important fasteners or connections and service items. And what should be a really easy job on the car, something like changing an oil filter or changing spark plugs, can end up being incredibly difficult when you haven't taken this into consideration. And for a car that you intend to live with for quite a long time and service, this sort of thing is really important. So the mock-up will act as an accurate stand-in until the real engine is ready for the car. But even once we have the final engine, this is still going to be a valuable thing to have around in the workshop. It can be used to help develop mounts for if we want to run this on a static dyno. Or if there's any time that we have the actual engine out for rebuild or out for servicing, this can be a, a placeholder. So taking the time to put together a decent mock-up is valuable as a long-term tool not just a once-off use. I want to keep in mind here that the teardown is just the first step of this process. We're going to need to clean everything, make it look really nice and bolt together the parts that we're keeping. Now also note we didn't split the heads apart at this time, but we'll need to before we assemble the mock-up. There's a lot of weight caught up in those heads that we can we can take a lot out just by removing the camshafts, removing the valve train and so on, and just keeping the outside aluminium components. And the weights that we're getting of all of the components, which we'll show in a minute, can be used to either modify the models that I already have of the engine to be a bit more mass accurate, or as information to model up a simplified version of the engine with key mounts that have been scanned or measured. Now getting an accurate, usable model from 3D scanning is quite an investment in time and I'm not entirely sure how far I'll go here. If you have the general volumes sorted out for the engine and you do have accurate mounting locations, it's pretty surprising how rough a CAD model you can get away with and still have a really good workable manufacturing model. And that's where we're going with this project. We're looking to manufacture a car, not to just have the best rendered vehicle that we possibly can. But we'll see more of that in later videos. Now I had the easy job when we're looking to weigh all of these components. Harley was doing all of the lifting and all of the weighing and I was sitting there just entering it into a spreadsheet. Now we didn't strip every single component down to an individual part. Some things we kept together as subsystems, but we did try to make sure we got a weight of the systems plus the fasteners used to assemble it in the engine. 
Now, if you're in the US, I'm sorry I put these weights in grams. I have had the fortune of working in the US and I can't remember all of the different weight measurements, ounces and pounds and so on. If you want to, you can do the conversion, but I will warn you that anything measured in kilos is just a lot more in pounds. I would just stick with the lower number. Makes it a lot easier to build a lightweight car. For example, this engine comes out to being about 100 kilos. That's about 221 pounds. Now, you don't need to be a genius to know that 221 is a much bigger number than 100, which pretty much explains why most of the lightweight cars aren't made in the US. Now if we take all of these weights that we've got, put them together, we can see that the total weight of all of the components measured is 108 kilos. Now I have taken off the power steering pump and any air conditioning system. At this stage, there's no intention of running those in the final vehicle. In total, we had 76 line items that we'd listed here. And if we collect them into main, the main areas, we see this breakdown. So the heads, including the rocket covers, are the heavier system. And this is one of the downsides of running a flat engine, is that instead of having a single cylinder head, you end up with two. And you can't help but add a little bit of weight when you're doing that. Now there's no doubt that the EJ20 is not going to be the lightest four-cylinder two-liter out there. Following the heads, the blocks come in at about 26 kilos and account for almost a quarter of the weight of the engine. And then we have the crankshaft, rods and pistons, which I'm calling the piston motion system, coming in at third place with about 14 kilos. And those are the big systems, and those are the ones you generally think about when you're thinking of the engine. And between them, they account for about 64% of the weight of the engine. But we should note all of the other systems added together are still larger than any one of these major systems. We will note that the flywheel is one of the heaviest individual components coming right behind the block halves. And one of the reasons I like to split out the fasteners individually is that we see that the fasteners account for about 3% of the weight of the engine. And this is an underestimate because we haven't fully pulled apart the heads, which have a fair few fasteners in there. We've definitely experienced this in the design of uh, the small race cars, is that you've got to keep an eye on your fasteners. The weight of all of those connections can build up if you're not careful. Now, there's not much we can do about that in this engine. In fact, when you start to go through these systems, you find that there's very little possibility that we're going to be able to significantly reduce the weight of this powertrain. We might be able to put in a slightly lighter flywheel and we will be able to do something around the intake. But I will note that we haven't even included the weight of the exhaust here. So 
those systems, the ancillary systems, that's really where we're going to be able to try and save a little bit of weight if we want to. There's not much better than putting a good cutaway together. So we thought we'd lay out these components so that we could get a really cool shot of the engine. In this part of the video, I like to call car plumbers in the club. So now, let's rebuild the engine. If you go through the manuals for cars, which I very rarely do, I just go and do the stupid thing of just jumping in and trying to do it myself. But if you read the manuals, often uh, the instructions for reassembling something is just work through in the opposite direction. So this is a quick version of that. Now the great side benefit of trying to build your engine this way is you notice that the workspace, instead of getting messier, just gets cleaned up over time and the oil and corrosion and dust and dirt from the engine seems to magically make its way back into the engine, where it certainly doesn't belong. So if you want to see where this project goes, what we're going to do with this mock-up engine and how we're going to put it together, as well as all the other systems that we're working on for building this car, please like and subscribe to the channel. If we get a good enough response, we might be lucky enough to convince Harley to come back and work on this project in the long term. Thanks for your time.